This is Dan Bjorklund, Landis Technical Agronomist, and the last video we discussed what happens when the plant shut down because of southern rust and why stock uh, quality can be such an issue when you don't have enough leaf surface um, above that ear leaf to provide sugars uh, to fill that ear. It robs from the stocks uh, and cannibalizes those sugars and, and, and we have uh, the challenges. So this video is going to uh, start on July 17th. July 17th, I made a prediction that if we had weather continuing in July like we had up to that point, I was calling for a disease outbreak. And so you can see um, uh, that part of it. Um, I, I wanted to show that because not a lot of people were talking that way um, uh, in, in July um, at that uh, particular point in time. And then the next one is from uh, August 25th, just a couple of days ago. I'm standing in a field of corn that had no fungicide applied. And this is the, the end game of rust. I said we were going to have a disease outbreak in the first uh, part of this video and then the second part is what actually happened after we had the outbreak. Then we were on the big show um, on WHO earlier this week and I predicted with Dwayne Murley that with the continuous rain we were, that was in the forecast, we were going to have a potential outbreak. Well here is what causes potential outbreak. These leaves are completely saturated all the way to the top. This corn looks good. It's uh, at uh, R1 pollinated and walking out into this canopy using Sky Scout helps us find what lurks beneath. I would guess if I walked out into this field that we're going to find various different uh, diseases like tar spot, southern rust, northern corn leaf blight, and many other things. And so what happens with the potential two to three inches of rain this week I think we're heading towards an outbreak. It's a field. It's August 25th. And you can see me. We've been in this field a couple of times. You can see the aftermath. This is truly Southern Rust Endgame because it's August 25th, 110 day corn and it's dead. And if you look at the ears, they're dropped. And again, it's really you can see it in the ears. This looks like corn that was husked back, you know, two or three weeks ago for a plot day. And these ears are just spongy. If I had three arms, I'd be able to twist this in two, which, which I don't. Um, and there's no way to hold this camera uh, to demonstrate that, but I think you can see it's just not a normal ear. None of these ears. Are normal. They're just really loose. The corn was overwhelmed by the rust and it just, it just gave up. Every single, every single leaf was impacted and the plant could not produce enough sugars, so it just senesced. I think it tried to, you can see where the rust is even on the husk of the ears. What? It's, it's tried to take simple sugars from the stalks, which we've talked about in other videos. And so what's gonna happen is, is this is the 25th, and this corn is going to be very suspect, very subject to harvestability issues because these plants just don't have any plant health left in them, especially this early. And so it's going to be really critical to get this 
combined in the 20s. You don't want to try to wait till it's in the 15s on, you know, to save on drying costs because this corn will be flat in a month. And again, this is only August 25th. This is a, this is a significant um, uh, challenge in this field because it died a couple of days ago. It's 112 day corn and should not be dead in, in August. Um, I've had tons of calls and tons of questions uh, since that uh, video that was released just a few days ago talking about uh, the potential impact of rust. Uh, some of you sprayed once, some of you sprayed twice. What I believe is that it all came down to genetics first. If you had genetics that was pretty decent, one application really pretty much stopped it. If you had genetics that was really super susceptible to rust, then maybe even the second application only, only went uh, so far. We've taken a lot of notes and we'll have winter meetings talking about uh, the genetic uh, side of this because that's going to be a key, um, a key factor uh, looking uh, to next year. But um, uh, I thought this was a good follow-up uh, to the previous uh, video just saying, you know, we thought we were going to have an outbreak. We did. And there's just a month apart from those two videos from the 17th and the 25th. And you can see the result when you watch this video. Dan Bjorklund. Linus Technical Agronomist, sadly signing off on this field. Should have been sprayed a month ago. We recommended that. The farmer declined, and this is what, this is what happened.